Pete Scargill here. This short video is meant to accompany my blog entry on the Alexmega A3 Pro. I'm not going to go through the whole closed box taking the tape off job. Here's the box opened up and ready to go. Just to give you a quick heads up, the box arrived recently and I opened it up yesterday morning to start putting together the engraver. I spent between four and five hours altogether. So it's not a it's not a quick job, but it's actually quite easy at the end of the day. The blog entry will give you more of a breakdown of all the bits inside the box, but for now let's dive in. As you can probably tell, I've made a start here. There are five aluminium parts. Here are the bulk of the parts, including all the plastic. I've missed out the more boring bits, like taking off all the plastic coverings of these aluminium rods. No point in showing you that. You have three motors. Tools are provided. And the first thing I have to do, according to the instructions, which are over here, online, as you can see. So the first thing is to take the coverings of all of the sheets of perspex. So basically all of those bits of perspex have to look like this one. That's going to take me a little while. And there it is, nice shiny plastic. Mind you, I did lose my fingernails in the process, but it wasn't hard. So that's a start. Oh, crumbs. All of these little pieces have got plastic covering on them as well. Another 10 minutes and that's the protective plastic off the rest of the, the uh, Perspex pieces. So we're done with that now. As you can see, I chose to do this in a slightly different order to the recommended order. I'm putting the M3x10 screws, which are the very smallest, into the uh, back, back plate first. That's the first lot of M3x10 um, bolts in. That's two done. M3 times 10 bolts. Note the orientation of the connectors here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has to be said it would have been easier if I'd put those on first before I put the motors under the purse backs, but there you go. That's two done. I've got one left and one motor. 4M5 by 35 bolts, four wheels, four nylon columns. That's the first of the four wheels on, uh, two, three, four, and then the same again on the other side. So these first two Perspex pieces are obviously meant to go onto the two identically lengthed pieces of aluminium, double height. There they are together, so two exactly the same. At this point, if you've got a small bench like mine, you start running out of room because you've got to leave bits partly assembled get onto the next slot. I've got to do the same operation again with this that I did with that and then I've got to find somewhere to put those. So that's the two double height shorter lengths I'm using right now. Begins to get obvious at this point that I should have used a bigger bench. However, I have to say going back to these little pieces here of Perspex with the uh, bolt and locking nut well, I really needed a um, pair of pliers to put those together, which you don't get supplied with. I must admit, this is the second of these LX makers I've put together, and I don't understand why they use a little nut and bolt there instead of something a bit smoother. So basically, you've got just the bolts, bolts sticking through at the bottom there, and then that goes into the aluminium. When you tighten the, uh, the big bolt up with your Allen key, Essentially what's happening is you're just pushing down that bolt to hold the uh, rubber in place. Got that fastened at one end. I've now got to feed through and push this along. This would have been easier done with three hands rather than two. But at the end of the day, it's not that hard. As I start on the second uh, leg here, 
you may notice the light changed slightly. That's because I've now spent two and a half hours getting this far. Second side done and dusted. I have to say I'm quite pleased about that. Still a long way to go. Lots and lots of nuts and bolts. There's all the stuff um, you see here. And then over on the other side, there's all that stuff to use up yet. And now the last of the three motors. And there's its little gear piece. That was easy. Note the orientation of the connector there in towards the, uh, the per not at the bottom, at the opposite side. There it is. I kept this mount for the laser out of the way thinking I wouldn't need it until the end but apparently it looks like uh, that's got to go on here I believe. Looks like I've got this coming up more quickly than I thought. With just a bunch of pictures to go by this is all a bit vague but I'm guessing I've done that right. Three um, 10 mil long M3s. The others don't line up at all, so that must be it. I'm assuming they've provide holes for, provided holes for different kinds of lasers. I'm now going to try fitting these four screws with spacers. More panic, but there's the uh, last one that's going to go on, I assume, the last of the three double pieces here. And for the first time, spacers on both sides. Not done that before. I wondered why I had so many spacers. Am I right in saying that I'm going to end up just putting nuts in there? And that's pretty much it. Hold on. No, of course not. The uh, motor goes on there. Now, I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time, so you're just going to have to take my word for it as I fasten this down. Yes, and there is one spare locking nut. At this point I'm going on to artificial lighting because there's far too much reflection off the window. Yeah, there's one spare locking nut. That's those four in. And I'm about to mount that to the third bar. And there's the third piece done. Nice tight fit. I shouldn't crow, but um, I suspect these bottom pieces by comparison are going to be easy. Right, two of those, the little pieces in there. Two of the same size bolts. It's rather handy that they've reduced this down to the minimum variation of sizes. And yep, yeah, simple enough. It looks like they want you to uh, fasten all four pieces on the uh, two aluminium runners there. I must admit, I did wonder what the M5x8s were for. They go into the little slider nut there at any sort of suitable point away from the edge. You know, I don't remember rubber feet like that on the original um, A3 Pro. Okay, there's still a lot of work to be done, but now we're at the point where the four sides are going to fit together and it's going to be one piece. That will make life a lot easier. And there it is. The basic frame is in one piece and rock solid. Just got to fit the uh, laser section now and then fit the laser itself. Then the wiring, etc. However... I think the bulk of the work's done and it's only taken me three and three quarter hours to get this far. I must admit I wondered what those little tiny little columns were for that you probably can't see there. Um, and also the base I've got is a different shape to this one. As you can see my black base doesn't have bits protruding off the end so they've obviously changed the design. Right electronics in. Definitely a step up from the original Alex Maker. Uh, you'll notice that is uh, USB-C. 
power in there. Except, of course, that that's not untypically the end of the instructions. It just says, oh, just fasten it onto uh, the bar. And that's straight onto the software. The laser looks like it'll be easy enough to fit. But I haven't got a clue what that's for. There's no mention of this little board at all. There it is, the laser's in place, held with those four screws. Still no idea what that's for. And it has to be said, I've got a hell of a lot of spare parts. I suppose better to have plenty of spares than not enough, but... I really don't know why there's that many. Anyway, complete with one spare piece. Still haven't figured out how I'm going to mount that. As usually happens with these things, they get a bit more messy once you start putting the wires on. But you've got Y1 and Y2, X, the laser, power and USB. Goodness knows what the other connectors are for. They refer to motor, 12 volts and servo. Yeah, adjust the laser focus um, at the position I've got so that wherever I'm going to put my item, it's focused on that item. That's pretty much it. In the end I cheated. I took one of those uh, rubber spacers, chopped it in half and used that as a spacer. Uh, as you can probably not see here. There you go. To hold the whole thing together. And uh, another one on the other side. That works well. And with a little tidying up, the uh, Y cables around there, obviously they've got to be loose on the sides. And the X and uh, laser. I believe that there's a button up there that's a weak option for the laser for testing, but uh, I think I'll put some wood down there so I don't blow my bench up. And amazingly, everything worked first time. So at this point I'm going to take you back to the blog where there's a lot more on the subject.